Welcome back. You're still tuned in to Markets Today on CNBC TV 18. Let's get to the rest of the headlines that we're tracking for you. The fourth headline today, Equidas Small Finance Bank rallied over 5.5% in trade after the managing director and CEO of the company, PN Vasudevan, decided to stay on for another three years. Abhishek Kotari is here with more details on this story. Well, Equitas gave a press release to the exchanges wherein they have mentioned that Mr. P. N. Vasudevan, who is the current MD and CEO of the company, has decided to stay on as the MD and CEO of the bank after his tenure ends, which is in July 2023. So he was earlier planning uh, for philanthropy move post the, uh, you know, retiring from the bank. So he had expressed desire to move on from the bank uh, after identifying a successor to his current position. So board has now resolved. Uh, to renew his term for a further period of three years, that is from July of 2023 to about July of 2026. This is, however, subjected to RBI as well as shareholders' approval. Back to you. Okay, all right, Abhishek, thanks very much for that. Let's move on then. Well, Spun Corp surged over 6% today after the NCLT Ahmedabad approved a resolution plan submitted by the company for Syntec. Pregraph uh, and Infra Limited. Uh, separately, the company had also announced commissioning of its coke oven plant in Gujarat through its subsidiary, Wellspun Metallics. Vivek Ayer is here with the details. Well, the stock in focus is Wellspun Corporation. Now, the NCLT, the National Company Law Tribunal, has gone ahead and approved the resolution plan. Uh, that was given by one of the company's subsidiaries. And this particular resolution plan was for SPIL, that is Syntex Prefab and Infra Limited. Now, one of the company's subsidiaries named Big Shot Infra Facilities Private Limited will be the implementing entity. So some positive news flow coming in as far as Wellspun Corp is concerned. Uh, another important update, uh, the company has gone ahead and commissioned the coke oven plant in Gujarat to Wellspun Metallics Limited. And again, this particular facility has a production capacity of approximately 210 million tons per annum of coking steel. So again, some positive news are coming in. Markets clearly cheering this particular update that was given by Wellsman Corp. Okay, all right, uh, Vivek. Thanks very much for that. That's on uh, Wellspun Corp. But we are staying with you. You're also tracking SJVN. The stock closed with gains of close to 5%. The PSU involved in hydroelectric power generation and transmission has secured a 100 megawatts wind power project through bidding conducted by the Solar Energy Corporation of India. Vivek, tell us more. The slew of order wheels that we're seeing across the renewable space is something that bodes quite well uh, for SJVN. The company announced an important update in terms of an order win. So the company got a 100 megawatt wind power project via bidding conducted by the SECI, which is the Solar Energy Corporation of India. The tentative cost of development of this particular project is close to 700 crore, and the project is expected to generate 262 million units in the first year of commissioning. The cumulative energy generation over a period of 25 years will be about 6,574 million units. Some positive news flow coming in for SJVN, and this is a significant order win. Again, this particular stock did quite well in the trading session today. Okay, all right, Vivek, thanks very much for that. Let's move on then. Restaurant Brands Asia ended the day over 3% higher on the back of news that they are set to launch the U.S. fast food chain Popeyes in Indonesia. Mangla Malu is here with the details on this. Restaurant Brands Asia was in focus today. Remember, this stock was earlier known as Burger King. And the reason why it was in focus is because it's signed an agreement to open Popeyes, uh, one of the fastest growing chicken sandwich brands in Indonesia. And they will start with about 300 outlets in Indonesia. In India, of course, Popeyes is owned by, the franchise of Popeyes is owned by Jubilant Foodworks. And also, uh, these stocks had taken a bit of a drubbing in the last week. And uh, as a result of which, some bit of bounce back was on the cards. And in the line of uh, these stocks itself, we saw big moves on the likes of Zomato, Jubilant Foodworks. We saw some moves in, uh, in the names like Indian Hotels, etc. So a structural tailwind coming in. And in that, Restaurant Brands Asia got a positive news with regards to its new opening. Okay, all right, Manglam. Thanks very much for that. Well, on to another buzzing stock. It was Gujarat Fluorochemicals. The stock gained a whopping 9%. After ICICI Security says the company's fundamentals will remain robust with opportunities expanding. Sonal Bhutra is here with an outlook. 
Thanks a lot for that. Well, yes, uh, IFASA Securities is bullish on Gujarat Fluorochemicals. They talk about the stock underperformance. Uh, the stock is down anywhere between 20 to 25 percent in last one and three months. But they say despite this fall, the fundamentals of the uh, company remain really strong. And if we talk about valuations of the stock at current levels, they are reasonable. At P, they are trading. It is trading at 19 and a half times. And as per EV to EBITDA ratio, it's trading at 13.2 times FY24 earnings. So it is one of the cheaper ones as far as the fluorination uh, segment is concerned. Uh, now about their fluorochemical segment, they say that market is turning favorable for integrated players and since Gujarat Flu Fluorochemicals is an integrated player, they will stand to benefit because they are fully backward integrated for its entire fluoropolymers business. In terms of PTFE prices, which is one of their important products, uh, prices have increased to the tune of 40% to 960 rupees per kg, which is so far in FI23 versus what we saw in in FI22. Uh, spreads, however, have not materially seen an increase. This is because of higher power costs. And Gujarat Fluoro, being the sole manufacturer of PTFE in India, tends to benefit at least from some increase in the spreads that this particular product has seen. Export revenues from new fluoropolymers has increased to 450 crore rupees so far in FI23 versus 100 crores in FI20. And this is a tailwind for the company and they remain bullish on the stock as well. Okay, all right, Sonal. Thanks uh, very much for that. Well, let's move on then. The fifth headline for this evening. Crude started off on a positive note after two straight weeks of gains. Oil prices are lingering above $83 per barrel. Manisha Gupta, Commodities Editor, brings us details. Well, yes, two straight weeks of gains and the third week the today as well has started on a positive note for the crude oil prices where we are back above $84 a barrel. It actually has been quite a roller coaster ride for the crude oil prices in this year. We've done a high of $139 a barrel, a low of $75 and now we are trading at around $83, $84 per barrel kind of levels there. Well, the latest trigger comes in from Russia which reiterated that they will cut production between 5 to 7% in the first quarter of 2023. This is in retaliation to the price cap and uh, export sanctions as well. And then Russian Baltic uh, export, if you look at for the month of December, has seen a decline by 20% on a month-on-month -month basis. Markets also are looking at gasoline, diesel, heating oil, all of those prices also surging up by nearly 5% on an year-on-year -year basis. If you look at the prices in this year, we've seen Brent gain up by 11.5%, but the product prices have done quite well. So for example, natural gas is up 28%, heating oil is up 40% for this year. The best of the performance though has come in from coal which has seen 140 percent of gains but that is because of underinvestment and because of the higher prices of electricity and gas as well for the next year now the most of the banks and brokerages including ubs bank of america morgan stanley goldman sachs all believe that we are headed towards three digit crude oil prices yet again so they are targeting 100 to 110 dollars a barrel of an average price for brent for 2023 now Okay, all right, Manisha, thanks very much for that. And before we wrap, 2022 has for banks has brought healthy loan growth and profitability. The challenge of growing loan books in the face of rising interest rates have not become daunting as yet. And banks say they are in a pretty strong position to deal with these challenges. CNBC TV 18's Abhishek Kothari balances the books of 2022 for the Indian banking sector. Well, 2022 has been a phenomenal year for the banking sector. Bankers have a reason to smile as they move away from the pain of NPA cycle to healthy loan growth and profitability. So talking about profitability, Profits for the sector on a quarterly basis has increased from Rs 36,854 crores in Q2 FI22 to right now about 58,717 crore as of Q2 FI23. Now factors that have helped in improving the profitability of the banks is improvement in loan growth and reduction in stress portfolio of the banks. So loan growth for the banking sector as of Q2 FI23 was at 16.44%, perhaps one of the highest that you saw from 1st of November 2013. The rise in loan growth helped in stronger top line growth for the banking sector, which has helped the bottom line or the earnings of the banks. So the loan growth incrementally has been driven by the retail segment. Now corporates have started to come back for working capital loans as money market rates have shot up through the roof. So capex based demand going ahead may augur well for healthy loan growth rate for the banking sector. Stronger loan growth has also translated into healthy operating profit growth 
for the banking sector. Operating profits of the sector has grown from 97,383 crore in Q2 FY22 to right now a little under 1,15,000 crore as of Q2 FY23. Stress reduction. The banking sector has seen its gross NP ratio decline from 7.4% in Q2 FY22 to right now about 5.24% in Q2 FY23. In value wise, the decline has been 15.2% YOI in Q2 FY23. The declining gross NPA amount wise has largely been led by the PSU banks. Now PSU banks gross NPA on a value wise has declined by 15.9% YOI that is from Q2 FY22 to Q2 FY23 while that of private sector banks has declined by 12.7% in the same period. So PSU banks the gross NPA ratio has declined by 256 basis points from Q2 FY22 to Q2 FY23 while that of private sector banks banks has declined by 119 basis point in the same period. Banks balance sheet has strengthened with their core provision coverage ratio increasing from 69.7% in Q2 FY22 to right now about 74.6% in Q2 FY23. PSU Bank's core provision uh, coverage ratio has increased to 74.9% in Q2 FY23 when compared to a little under 70% in Q2 FY22 and that of private sector banks has increased to 74.4% in Q2 FY23 versus 69% that they had a year ago. So for 2023, the loan growth could remain strong and could be in double digits. Net interest margin will continue to expand till Q4 FY23 results as loans are getting repriced faster and at a healthier rate. Return ratios will expand as credit costs will come down and stress in the balance sheet will continue its downward trajectory.